Hey guys, <clears throat> guys, last night I gave you a few hints about my next guest on Blue Collar and a Scholar, and we had three correct answers. They were Michael Glowacki, Therese, and Bill Germino. They correctly answered who the next scholar on Blue Collar and a Scholar will be. And that is Dr. Douglas Beaumont. Now, Michael Glowacki nailed it right off the bat. I was surprised how quick he got it. So I'm going to allow him to send me a question. You could email me at bluecollar uh, at gmail.com or you can just put it right in the comments. Uh, give me your hardest question that Protestants give you. Protestant says, oh, you Catholics aren't Christians because, bam, whatever they say. Are you Catholics got a false gospel? Bam. Whatever question. And uh, I'm going to give it to uh, Dr. Beaumont. But there's so I, 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 I don't want, I'm not going to be able to give everybody's questions because I got about <laughs> 10 hours worth of questions too. And I want to keep this under an hour. Uh, I told him it's going to be tough because this guy, uh, this guy is incredible. So what's so exciting about Douglas Beaumont is this. So when I was coming back, well, before I was a, before I came back to the Catholic Church, I was trying to convert uh, my mom's new husband. My, my dad had passed away. My mom was like in her mid seventies. Her neighbor was eighty, uh, and they they were just really good friends. And him being a devout Catholic, thought if they were to move in together, they needed to be married. So they got married, and then they moved in together. Uh, Long story short, I felt it was my obligation as a born-again, Bible-believing, blood-bought, <laughs> charismatic, evangelical Christian to convert this Catholic Christian. And he posed some of the hardest questions to me that I ever got from a Catholic. So I started researching, and um, I was getting all these theological books. I got uh, Norman Geisler and uh, Joshua Betancourt. Uh, this, I forget the name of it, but it was, you know, the proof that Rome was not the church church. Uh, that it claimed to be that the Roman Catholic Church wasn't the true church. Um, then it was uh, Ron Rhodes, James White. Long story short, James White says in his book, I'm writing this book in response to all the evangelical theologians and Bible scholars that became Catholic. So I said, wow, I didn't know that there were a bunch of evangelicals who became Catholic. So I Googled them, and of course, Scott Hahn came up. I fell in love with Scott Hahn, Peter Crift. I fell in love with Peter Crift. Then I seen Joshua Benincourt. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Joshua Benincourt, I just read this book a, a couple of weeks ago that he wrote, but apparently he wrote it two years prior to convert into Catholicism. So Joshua Benincourt, a scholar who co-wrote a book with a, another scholar, Norman Geisler, two Protestant scholars, he, he converts. So I want to find out more about Joshua Benincourt. So I find this book authored by, you guessed it, Douglas Beaumont, uh, with a forward by Francis J. Beckwith. He was another scholar we had on this. Uh, actually, I think he was our, might have been our last scholar we had on Blue Collar and a Scholar, Dr. Francis Beckwith. I'm losing track. But what, what's amazing about this book, <laughs> Evangelical Exodus, is it's a story, a true story, about dozens Listen to that again. Dozens of Protestant seminarians, dozens of Protestant scholars that are going to school to become pastors and theologians in Protestantism. And they went to Norman Geiser school because as a Protestant, Norman Geiser was considered one of the top theologians in evangelicalism. In fact, he had a master's in theology from a uh, Protestant university but he loves uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, so he went to Loyola, uh, uh, one of the top Catholic universities, to get his PhD in philosophy. And then, because he knew it was a good school, and uh, you know, he, a lot of Protestants love St. Thomas Aquinas because he was before the Reformation. So a lot of them will say, well, you know, he, if he was born 100 years later, he would have went right along with uh, Martin Luther and uh, and John Calvin, until they actually learn about the man and they realize how Catholic he was. So anyway, long story short, uh, Douglas Beaumont, who's brilliant, 
I mean, he's just a brilliant dude, becomes a Christian, wants to learn so much about the faith, loves apologetics, loves Norman Geisler, finds Norman Geisler, starts a college, Southern Evangelical uh, Seminary, I believe it's called, and uh, offers a master's degree in apologetics. And they're very rare to find. I, I never met a guy with a, a degree in apologetics. I love apologetics. I, I get a lot of material from Doug Beaumont, Scott Hahn, you know, uh, Steve Ray. There's a lot of guys. Tim Staples is awesome. And um, this guy actually got a degree in apologetics. And then he went out. And then from there, he went to uh, Northwest University, which uh, is known as uh, one of those Ivy Plus schools. So you got the Ivy Leagues in the Northeast, but then you have like MIT and Stanford, a few other schools that are considered just as equivalent. Northwest is one of those schools. And he got a PhD in theology. So this guy, and he, and he finishes at the top of his class every time. This guy is brilliant. And unlike some scholars, I mean, if you ever heard of uh, that liberal uh, Michael Eric Dyson, every he always picks the biggest, most unused word <laughs> for every for every. Uh, discussions. Uh, Doug Beaumont uses the right word for every discussion. So when he talks, he just makes everything make sense, just clear, crisp, and just listen to this guy. He will give you so many tips on how to evangelize, how to defend the Catholic faith, because he was a Protestant uh, apologist and he became Catholic. So anyway, getting back to this book, after he gets his PhD, Norman Geisler, the president of the school, the founder of the school, invites him back to teach. He becomes a professor at this Protestant university. And within a few short years, dozens of the professors and the students become Catholic. It becomes such a scandal in Protestant circles. They start accusing, you know, there's always a conspiracy behind everything. So, of course, the conspiracy was Norman Geisler was an undercover Jesuit priest because Norman Geisler got a PhD from a Jesuit university, Loyola. And a lot of Protestants were getting mad. How do you keep producing all these Catholics? So that's what I really want to ask uh, Dr. Beaumont. How did this happen? I got two theories away. It could have happened. Was it because Norman Geisler was such a great teacher? He was such a great Bible teacher that he just taught you guys the truth and he knows so much about St. Thomas Aquinas. He taught you some of the things that St. Thomas Aquinas taught that you couldn't help to become Catholic. Or was it because he was such a great Bible teacher that really smart Bible scholars were attracted to learn from him? So it was just a matter of time before they became Catholic because the saying is true. Weak Catholics become Protestants. But strong Protestants become Catholic. You never hear of a Protestant <laughs> becoming a Catholic who doesn't know the Bible well. You hear of a lot of Catholics like me when I was 19 in boot camp. Became Protestant because I didn't know my faith. I didn't know the Bible. So I became Protestant. But you never hear a weak Protestant. One just a nominal Protestant converting to Catholicism. I never hear that happen. I hear of men like Scott Hahn, Dr. Beaumont, Dr. Francis Beckwith coming over to Catholic faith. So it's going to be real exciting. Why did so many Protestants become Catholic? And I'm talking dozens. Now this book, Evangelical Exodus, I think it gives about eight or nine of them. Joshua Benincourt, the guy I told you co-authored the anti-Catholic book with uh, Norman Geisler. Doug Beaumont gives his testimony. And there's, like I said, about six or seven more guys. Awesome book. I highly recommend it. I say he's an author, but everybody just gives their testimony. So I guess he put the book together. Uh, I don't know if you would call that the author, but definitely check this book out, Evangelical Exodus, great apologetics, every page. And again, I want to ask uh, Dr. Buman about Norman Geisler. You know, what did he know about him on a personal level? Why did so many of his students become Protestant? And then I'm going to ask him, well, I'm going to ask him Michael Glowacki's question, whatever you put in the comments or my email. But then I want to ask him, like, what's what led this? What led you? What was your reason? What's the most important reason you can give to someone? If you had 10 minutes talking to your brother who's a Protestant, how would you win him? And I'm telling you, this guy, like I said, he's a scholar, but he talks so real, like down to earth, 
just crisp, clean, and he's short. Unlike me, that I go on and on, this guy gets to the point quick. So I want to learn from him as well. This is going to be really exciting. So hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified because it's going to be August 18th, 5 o'clock. And then, you know, we post it as soon as we're done. So you want to get alerted that night. And uh, so that, that's going to be exciting. Dr. Douglas Beaumont on the next Blue Collar and a Scholar. Now, before I end, I just got to tell you a funny story I heard the other day. If you got a minute, I think you'll appreciate this story. There was this elderly lady down here. She's coming out of a grocery store, pushing her cart. And she sees four guys in her car. So she takes, you know, it's Florida. She opens up her pocketbook, takes out her Glock, points the gun at uh, these guys. She's like, I got a gun and I know how to use it. Now get out of that car. So these four young guys freaking take off running. So, you know, she's shooken up. You know, she didn't shoot them, but it was still, you know, very imagined. It was very uh, traumatic to her, this whole situation. So she said she gets in the car. And her hands are shaking and she can't get the key in the ignition. So she just waits a minute, takes a deep breath, and tries again. And now she's calm and she can't get it in. She's like, what's going on? And she looks and she realizes, this ain't her car. <laughs> she realized that these people were getting in their own car. So she feels terrible. So she finds her car and she's like, oh, I got I to go to the police station and tell them what happened. So she gets to the police station. She's telling the sergeant at the desk. He starts laughing hysterically. He can't even answer. He's like, just go, just go talk to them. And he points at the end of the counter. Those four young guys are reporting a carjacking by an elderly woman. <laughs> and uh, when she explains the situation... Uh, and apologizes. Uh, they decide they don't want to press charges. No uh, charges were pressed. So the point. So the point of the story is, we all make mistakes. That's why we all need a savior. But if you're buying or selling real estate, don't make a mistake. Go to realestateforlife.org, and I promise you, you will have a pro-life Christian realtor with the most expertise, experience, and professionalism, hands down in the field. God bless and stay Catholic.